I'm Sebastian St. James. There is one political party in Australia that is sending you broke. And it took the brilliant idea of one confused soul to expose them. Sebastian, I had a brilliant idea. Why not do a political stock market comparison? Find out if the stock market does better under different governments. It could be very interesting. Sign confused. Albanese is terrified that I will expose him. And ScoMo wants Trump to stop this video at the border. But I will expose the truth. Because you have the right to know whether who you vote for will make you rich or send you poor. When we think of the Australian stock market, we think of the ASX 200. But the AXX200 has a problem. It's too young. And it was started on the 31st of March 2000. Well, how long ago was that? When the ASX200 was created, Australia's number one favourite song was NSYNC's Bye Bye Bye. You may hate it, but it ain't no lie, baby. Bye Bye Bye. <laughs> if you had a headache when the ASX200 was created, you were likely to die. Heron offers a $250,000 reward to try to find out who tampered with its paracetamol. Ah, the good old days. But there is another, another index lost in the mists of time. That index is so ancient, only your father's fathers would know about it. Oh, it's the All Ordinaries, which was established in January 1980 and is the oldest index of shares in Australia. Prior to this video, my data for the All Ordinaries went back to 1984. Impressive, but not good enough. I demand to be all-seeing. I demand to go back to the very day the All Ordinaries was created. And here it is. This is the data I've collected. Magnify. Enhance. The All Ordinaries was created on January 1980, and there it is. Our data goes back to January 1980. Whoa. And the All Ordinaries was created with a base index of 500. And there it is in my data, 500. <laughs> but the question is, if the All Ordinaries was the first Australian stock market index, what existed before then? Well, Australians were still cutting their lawns with scissors. And the average Australian kitchen looked like this. Whoa. It's a wonder Australians survived. Oh, I just got a thanks from Trusted Samurai. Thank you very much, Samurai. And I've already answered his question in the comments. The time has come. To see which political party reigns supreme. Oh, it's Anthony Albanese. In the 1.4 years since he's had the top job, the stock market looked like that. Well, if I draw a line through it, oh, it does go down. Yes. Based on the criteria of this video, that makes him a loser. But the frog would like to know more. It's my brand new channel member, Freddo Frog. Wow, you look delicious. Freddo Frog says, can you state the actual returns of each prime minister so that we can jeer at them? Personally, I like to throw rotten fruit, so that I can do Mr. Frog. Since Albo's been PM, his return has been minus 2.21%, dismal. And if we annualize that, that's just minus 1.63%. That is revealing. Oh, it's Scott Morrison. This is what the stock market did for the 3.7 years he was in the top job. And uh-oh, there was a disaster. But his overall returns were 16.4%, with a CAGR of 4.13%. Let's create a table so we can find out which PMs aren't making the grade. So I'll put those figures into my table of judgement. So far, Liberal is winning. Oh, I just got a thanks from Elmo. Excellent information, thank you. Continual disappointments for our hard-working dollars. Some may use the term ripped off. Thank you very much, Elmo. I really appreciate that. And I couldn't agree with you more. Super is ripping off a lot of people. Oh, it's Malcolm Turnbull. 
over the 2.9 years when he was in office, actually that looks like a pretty damn good graph. In total it was 26% or annualised 8.17. I place him into the table of judgement. Liberal is still winning. The bees want to know more. This is my latest channel member. On the left, that man's name is Bee. He is with his pet bee, and together they are Bee Bee. <laughs> and if you want to know what you look like in my world, just become one of my channel members. Bee Bee says, I can't wait for the final results. I need a running tally so that the loser can feel shame for longer. What a shameful request. And therefore, obviously one I'm going to grant. The total return my Labour's been in power is minus 2.21%. Liberal, on the other hand, has returned 42.4%. Wow, okay. Night and day. But to be fair, that was two Liberal terms against half a Labour term. But we will rectify that shortly. Oh, I just got a thanks from Elmo. XJT, which is the ASX 200, including dividends, is okay. However, this year I found SSJ has paid the best dividends for my investment by far. Thank you very much, Elmo. And a lot more really useful videos coming up. But for now, we have to discuss budgies. Oh, this is Tony Abbott. Do you love him or hate him? Well, let's see. During his two years in office, he returned minus 3.51%. Was he a good PM? The stock market says no. Add him to the table of judgment and there is some blood in the water for Liberal. But they are still beating Labour with an average CAGA of 3.51%. Perhaps we need a woman to shake things up. Oh, it's Julia Gillard. During her three years at the top job, she returned 4.52% and annualised 1.48%. This brings Labour up to an average CAGR of 1.55%, heading in the right direction. Which puts Labour into the green, but there is a hole in my data. And there it is. Who is it? Could there be somebody that was so greedy he had to have a second go? Oh, it's Kevin Rudd. During his second term of 2.8 months, yes, that's all he lasted, he returned a whopping 11.1%. Annualise that, that's 58%. Okay, if Australians hadn't voted out Kevin, we'd all be billionaires by now. What were you thinking, Australia? But let's check the graph. In his 2.8 months, yep, that is impressive. And so we'll slot him into the table. This makes Kevin Rudd the best PM so far. And that makes Tony Abbott the worst PM, with a CAGR of minus 1.78. Kevin was the best PM, except he had two terms. So we better judge him on the second. And in his first term, he returned minus 31.7%. <laughs> okay. How the mighty has fallen. And we pop him into the table. Making Kevin Rudd the best PM and the worst PM at the same time. Whoa. That is quite a skill. But I have a question. Aren't you doing a series on superannuation, Sebastian? Yes, I am. But some of my channel members have special access. This video was done for Orchhead. So if you, like Shrimp, would like your questions to go straight to the top of the queue, and obviously you would, hit the join button below this video. It's Johnny Howard, and he looks very excited. In his 11.7 year reign, he returned 202%. Impressive indeed. Let's see how it affected the overall party's tally. Well, it certainly brings up the total return, but the average CAGR at the moment, Labour is in front. Huh. This means we're getting some weird results. We notice the best CAGR goes to Labour. And yet the worst return also goes to Labour, and they're in the red. We have complete opposites. How can they both be true at the same time? Well, the problem is CAGR. CAGR, or Compound Annual Growth Rate, solves a massive problem. Oh, 
I've just added a new column called Days. This is the number of days which each Prime Minister served for. The best total return goes to John Howard. Which is not really fair, because he was PM for longer than I've been alive. <laughs> when John Howard first moved to Kirribilli House, everything was still powered by steam engines. Oh, I just got a thanks from Mystery. Thank you very much, Mystery. I appreciate that. The advantage in Kagar, it allows us to take two different Prime Ministers who serve for two different periods of time and still make a fair comparison between them. But that is where the usefulness of Kagar has stopped. When I've taken the average of all the Kagars, which you think is fair enough, unfortunately I've lost the data of how long each term lasted. The average Kagar figure is correct, but I've invented a brand new mathematics that will take this to the next level. And here it is, W Kagar, which stands for Weighted Kagar. If you're in office for a long term, like 4,284 days, your Kagar counts the most because you served for the longest period of time. And Kevin Rudd with the best Kagar only served 84 days. So Kevin's Kagar of 58% scales down to 0.48% because of the only 84 days he served. So who is the winner? The total weighted Kagar for Labour is minus 4%, and for Liberal it's 5.5%. Hey. Oh, it's Paul Keating. During his 4.2 years in office, he returned a whopping 39%, which is a Kagar of 8.11. Add that into the figures, and it brings Labour up to 0.8%. Apparently, it was the recession we had to have. So, who's next? I don't recognise this Prime Minister. Oh, it's Sebastian St James. Future PM in 2030. That I will look forward to, but hang on, I don't think the question allows for this. It says if the stock market does better, but I don't have the stock market returns for 2030. So I cannot allow this. Sebastian, come back in 2030 when the stock market is ready for you. Oh, I just got a thanks from Stephen Howard. And he talks about members direct options. Thank you very much, Stephen. And as we're now doing a mini series on super, that may well come up in the future. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Oh, it's Bob Hawke. He had the second longest term with 3,206 days. Meaning that his results will count more. But what were they? In his 8.8 .8 years, his return was 205%, or a Kagar of 13.6%. Wow, that is impressive. Will this fix Labour's trailing score? Oh, it seems to have. Labour's now on 3.5%, a whisker behind Liberal on 3.7. Neck and neck. So, which individual PM contributed the most? If we look at the weighted Kagars, oh, it's Bob Hawke at 2.94%. I sense we're nearly at the end. Let me check. The All Ordinaries was established in 1980, which means I have room for one more Prime Minister, and one that lost his pants. The mystery of how he lost his trousers and his dignity in a seedy American hotel. This is Malcolm Fraser, learning to ride a bike for the first time. He was Prime Minister from 1975 to 1983, but disaster! The All Ordinaries didn't exist, so we take it from when it did, which is the beginning of 1980. In that 3.2 years, his return was 3.06% and a Kagar of, well, less than 1%. Whoa! Which is pathetic, but not as bad as <coughs> Kevin07. I just got a thanks, and this one requires a fanfare. It's from Mr. Steve O.C. Thanks. Well, that was both mind-blowing and head explosive. Oh, how exciting again. But if I revealed that to you right now, on top of everything else in this video, your head would explode. Thank you very much, Steve. That was definitely worth a fanfare. Of course, this pushes Steve's questions back up the queue. Way to go, Steve! 
the time has come. Which PM reigns supreme? And which PM was the biggest loser? To find that out, we need to sort something out. Somebody had a second dip at PM. Oh, uh, on again, off again, Kev. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his two times he was PM, scale them based on the number of days which he was in office, and combine them into one overall figure. So now that every PM has one slot, the question is, which PM was the best date ever? And which one screwed us over? Will it be Pink's Will and Keating? Or will it be Eyebrows Howard? Or will it be Voodoo Dog Gillard? To make this comparison, we need to compare their individual performance, which is their Kagar. Using the power of Kagar, we can compare somebody who's been in office for nine years versus, say, somebody who's been in office for three. Based on the stock market performance where they had the top job and were in charge, the best Australian Prime Minister is... Bob Hawke, with a whopping 13.6%. And he looks very pleased with the results. And the second best BM was John Howard. And who took advantage of us, who was full of promise, but failed to deliver? <laughs> Making the worst PM, Kevin Rudd. At minus 7.97%. <laughs> and he doesn't look very happy with that outcome. Oh, I just got a thanks from Tim Lucas. Thank you very much, Tim. And two very interesting questions, which have now been bumped up the queue due to your thanks. The question is, which Australian political party has contributed the most to Australia's wealth? That we can find out by adding up the weighted Kagars. And this is how it works. The higher your Kagar, the more your Kagar contributes. And the longer you served, the more your Kagar contributes as well. Hmm, interesting. Which gives us the winner. The party that has singularly contributed most to the growth of the Australian stock market is... Liberal at 3.5% and Labor coming just behind. But plot twist, that is not the final answer. Because weighted Kagar is scaled based on the amount of time that you served. Which means that if Australians voted Liberal in more, it would increase the amount of their weighted Kagar. Useful, but not what I came here to find out. I want to know, per day served, which Australian party reigns supreme? Oh, I just got a thanks from Phil. Yes, I'm three away. Very nice, Phil. Thank you very much, and you are correct. But now, you and Mr. Steve O.C. are jostling for that position. Oh, it's all heating up. I still have a few more people to thank that I will do in my next video. Australia, you need to confess. Which political party did you vote into office for the longest period of time? most was Liberal at 8,618. Okay. <laughs> Let's solve the final question. Which political party was the best per day served? <laughs> we have the total number of days served. If we add up the total returns... <laughs> Labour returned 230%. Liberal 244%, which means they beat Labour, but they also served more days in office. <laughs> We take their total return and divide it by the number of days they served. This will give us the figure we want. It is the percentage of the stock market per day. Oh. oh I could hardly wait. And the winner is... Per day, Labour returns 0.03% and Liberal returns 0.03%. Oh, those figures are the same. Not helpful, Sebastian. I need a winner. The percentage return per day, well, that rounded off too much. So let's take it up to the percentage return per week. Yes! 
I'm confident we will get an answer this time. So the best Australian party based on the return of the stock market is... Labor with a return of 0.22% per week versus Liberal at only 0.20. Well, that was a plot twist. So, what are the final results? The best PM was Bob Hawke. The best return per week that they served was Labour. And because you voted them into office more, the party that contributed the most was Liberal. Fascinating results. Does that change who you're going to vote for at the next election? What we do know is over the long term, stock market results are based on profits. And profits are based on the economy. And while Australia's economy is linked to the US and to the rest of the world, government policy can have an effect on the economy and hence stock market returns. Oh, I just got a thanks from Tim. Thank you very much, Tim. That was a lovely surprise and it pushes Tim's questions further up the queue. Now that we know which political party has given us the best return, how do we make sure we don't lose it all in retirement due to sequence of returns risk? Click here to find out, or if you've seen that, click here.